Hi, my name is Aaron Miklo, and I'm here with legendary music producer Ed Stasium. Howdy. How's it going? It's going great. This year marks the 40th anniversary of the Ramones' Road to Ruin album. That is correct. Which you co-produced with Tommy Ramone. Mm -hmm. Can you talk about the process of making that album and what it was like working with the Ramones? Wow. How, many, how much time do you have? <laughs> all night. Yeah. Well, we, you know, we spent uh, pretty much all the end of May into July of 78 doing that. Um, we mastered it. Uh, there's a, the master is over there on the wall. Uh, it was on the 5th of, um, the 5th of July, 1978. And we went in with the th thoughts of they wanted to try to be a little more commercial with this record. Yeah. They wanted to elaborate on the Ramones yeah. a little bit more than we did on the previous two records that I did with them. And at this, by this time, I had become pretty much part of the band. Um, so I was accepted. We accepted one of us um, with, the, with the guys, Yeah. Um, especially Tommy, because Tommy and I had spent a lot of time in the control room together, even though Tommy did produce uh, Leave Home and Rocket to Russia with Tony Bon Jovi. Um, Tony was, wasn't really around a lot, and Tommy and I got really close. We were, we were the guys that were in the control room all the time. And for uh, Leave Home and Rocket, Tommy played drums on those. And this is the first time that, you know, Tommy couldn't take the road anymore. He wanted to get away yeah. um, from being on the road with the band, being in the band, but he still wanted to be involved with the band. So he, he wanted to be, you know, he, he was involved with the songwriting, the pre-production. I wasn't involved with the pre-production. They pretty much came into Media Sound with all the songs rehearsed and ready to go. And it, Marky on drums. And, uh, you know, Tommy passed the torch on to Marky for the project. And here we are, you know, at Media Sound. Again, we did Rocket to Russia at Media Sound, so the guys were comfortable. Uh, recording in the same room we did Rocket to Russia in. And we actually did the entire um, record at Media Sound. We all the backing tracks, overdubs, and um, mixing as well. M most of it in Studio A, which was, uh, Media Sound was a great room. It was a, um, it was a, the Baptist Church, um, Manhattan Baptist Church. It was built in the 30s and it was a grand, it was a, cathedral like room yeah it was a huge room and uh, at that time actually for Rocket to Russia I started putting up room mics and to mic the room to get a really great uh, overall picture of the band so it was it was a lot of fun getting back into media sound that's cool yeah was it you know there's all these stories where people say the Ramones would kind of bicker with each other um, was that did any of that occur no. making this record I, I never saw any arguing in the studio you know, I did nine records with them somewhere like something like that eight or nine I don't remember but there was never any bickering in the studio ever so you think that just maybe came from um, the live shows because maybe the stresses that touring puts on the band of, of course you know I, I did tour with them a little bit um, right after was it after Rocket to, you know it was before it was in between Rocket to Russia and uh, Road to Ruin, we, we recorded, uh, recorded a bunch of shows for the It's Alive record. Yeah. Which never really had a release in the United States. It was never released to have proper release. And that will also get a 40th release, proper release here in the States, finally. It was always available on import. It was released in Europe, England, Japan. Uh, but it was never released here. Speaking of the anniversary, um, there's a box set that's about to be released on September 21st. Mm -hmm. And then, like you said, one of the mixes on the box set is you stripping down Road to Ruin back to oh. its punk rock core. Yep. How long did it take you to work on that? Oh, uh, on, the, on the remix? Yeah. Um, probably three weeks. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, now that, I, now that I think about it, you know, inc including uh, mixing. We, we found some great stuff. We have uh, on the original... They, they archived everything at Warner Brothers, mm -hmm. and uh, we found two songs that we recorded for uh, Road to Ruin that we didn't put on the record back yeah. then. Um, one, one song called Slug. Yeah, I love that one. Yeah. That's a great and one. Another one. I mean, they were released with, uh, like, rough mixes were out there Yeah, there's, there's the, some stuff out on there. On the remastered uh, one of Rocket to Russia, there's a demo of that on yeah, it, which okay. I love. That's one of my uh, favorite Ramon songs, yeah. actually. Yeah, so uh, we found Slug and um, Come Back, She Cried. I walk out, aka I walk out. I think we called it I walk out. Yeah. And uh, fortunately, so we have the band, mm -hmm. the three, the three piece, and um, we did we did vocals on them. Um, we recorded like three tracks of Joey, so I was able to um, make comps 
Yeah. Right? Like I've been, we've been, I've been doing it for years, but it's very popular now that you would let a let a singer do its do their thing, mm -hmm. and then you take all the best parts of each one of the tracks, put it together. So that 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 does take a while to kind of do that. So that that was time time consuming. Yeah. Um, also did that on Rocket to Russia with a lot of stuff, uh, with Joey's vo with Joey's vocal actually. Yeah. Uh, going back and uh, going back a record here. Um, it was fun to just get rid of the double tracks and just have one track of Joey using getting all the best bits from all the different vocal tracks. So we were able to do that. So that's exciting that we were able to finish up those, n present them in a new mixed form yeah. for the 40th anniversary. And then those are the things that were um, released. Those are going to be the second disc that has those unreleased tracks that you've redone and yeah. the, the recordings. And then there's also a third disc, right, of their New Year's Eve uh, 1979 live yes. performance. Yeah, it was at the Palladium in New York. It was broadcast on WNWFM. Yeah. Which is really exciting for me because that was like my station. And, uh, you know, I did, I did actually did the mix back then. Yeah. It's a live mix. It's kind of haphazard, actually. It's kind of a little bad sounding in my opinion for me my sound and it um, was something like what tommy had recorded it or something he had a cassette. And you, yeah it, it was broadcast and there was a quarter inch stereo mix floating around several years ago but nobody could find the original um master yeah so um we i didn't have a i had a cassette i couldn't find it and uh tommy uh, bill england and he uh, he go, he finds stuff all over the place he finds these mysterious takes and outtakes he's he just i don't know where he finds the stuff yeah it's, it's amazing he goes he goes digging for yeah, it he's an amazing <laughs> he's an amazing cat man an amazing cat he goes, he goes digging and he finds stuff so uh it's uh the new year's eve show uh and it was like it was a live two-track mix you know and uh it's it's cool. It's, it sounds pretty good. That's cool. Yeah, and it's then a, it's a great performance. In the box set too, there's also, um, if I understood that correctly, a book that has photographs and yeah, things yeah, like they, that. They have the booklets. Little, they're not really books. They're more like booklets. Maybe yeah, like ten pages. They've had them in all the box sets, That's giving cool. a little information. Uh, people, different people, do uh, little essays. Um, you know, I, I've done a little essay on each one of the, the ones that I've been involved with. Um, yeah, Seymour's done one. Uh, Ray, Roy Traken did the main essay, and John John Holstrom did a little uh, essay about the cover. If you can see it over there, I have the that's the original. I don't know three color. Uh, it's I don't know. I'm, I'm not the art guy. Yeah. So I don't know what it's called. <laughs> but that, that's, uh, they're sheets. Uh, they're like vinyl sheets that you that cover with. Uh, I don't know what it's called. I don't know either. I have no idea. I just I just but it's appreciate cool. it. It's cool. Yeah, but I don't know what it's called. But. Seymour gave me that like. I was in his office. He said, "Hey, you want this?" And I took that like back in 1978, and I had it rolled up for years. I had it framed probably in the 80s sometime. That's cool. Yeah. Well, so working on this album again, you know, almost four decades later, what memories has that brought up for you? Well, it's like having the guys back in the room. They're all behind me, you know, and Tommy's next to me, so I'm I'm always listening to them, as as it has been for the the three box sets that I've worked on. Mm -hmm. I always, uh, you know, hear Dee Dee saying, you know, something about the mix and Joey will sit, be saying something and Johnny and Tommy, of course. Tommy was very, Tommy was very meticulous when it came to the recording and the mixing. Yeah. And, and uh, just not particularly any memories. Although uh, a friend of mine did remind me uh, about doing the sound effects on Bad Brain, mm -hmm. which we omitted, which I omitted on the, the new mix. We just kept it banned. And there were, there's actually, actually an edit on that as well. Um, it was a, it's a little longer on the original record, the drum section where we put all the sound effects in. But we were, we were throwing, we, to get the explosion at the end of the uh, silly sound effect um, part, we, uh, we used we were throwing light bulbs from uh, an overhang above the control room onto the onto the studio floor to, to get light bulbs crashing and exploding. So oh wow! I, I had I had completely forgotten about Did that. Did you put like masks on to protect yourselves? Oh, or? No, they were far away. We had the oh, mic. Yeah, okay. it was a large. It was like I mentioned. It was a cathedral type oh, wow. setting, and um, there was a uh, above the control room. There was uh, like a balcony, mm -hmm. and we could. You know, sit up there, do whatever you wanted, but you could. We they were th we were throwing light bulbs onto the studio floor and had microphones on the floor uh, recording the, the sound of them. 
That's cool. Um, yeah, so in the, in the original mix, there are light bulbs exploding at the end of the, the drum section of Bad Brain. Oh. Well, so you mentioned briefly um, Dee Dee. He's one of my favorite Ramones. I can't imagine what reading Dee Dee's book, um, Lobotomy, and then trying to imagine what feedback he would have in the stories I've heard about him. I mean, he seems like the less technical one, but apparently he also wrote a lot of the songs. He did. He wrote the greatest songs. Yeah. He so, really I mean, did. what kind of feedback would you hear from him? I mean, I can't <laughs> imagine it was as structured as what you'd hear from Johnny or Tommy. Sounds good, Eddie. <laughs> Pretty much. That's it. I like that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, did he ever um, dislike anything? or no, Dee Dee always went along. Yeah, he was yeah, always uh, just like, whatever. Speaking of Dee Dee's book, it's really funny because uh, I think in that book, I didn't read it, but a friend of mine said he read it and said that uh, I played bass on End of the Century. He didn't, I didn't play, he didn't play any bass. Is that the same book? I don't, it was, it's been a while since okay. I read it, but I mean, I've, I've <clears> heard people that knew Dee Dee say that many of the stories in that book are, are not true. They're yeah, Dee Dee's well, mind. I, I, I have to confirm that Dee Dee, in fact, did play bass on End of the Century, and I did not touch the bass on End of the Century. Yeah. But I did, you know, a couple things on Road to Ruin it played, mm -hmm. but um, not on, uh, not on End of the Century. And in the book, he says, I think that you think Ed Stasium. He, he played all the bass on that record. I didn't play it. He doesn't know. He doesn't remember. One of my favorite stories from the book, which, again, I don't know if it's true because it's just so outrageous. He talks about um, a night at a show in London. I think he said he was going to see The Clash or something. And he is in the bathroom with, I think it was Sid Vicious, and they're about to shoot up. And he says um, there's no water or anything. The water's not working. The toilet is overflowing. So he said they used the piss and puke no and shit water in the toilet to disgusting. to get the liquid to Ugh. shoot up and like and then they they shot up um and i don't know if that, that's true or not and then could he, be. he said they started throwing up and like it was just sad i mean that was the story in that book that stood out the most to me because it was just absolutely fucking disgusting oh my <laughs> um again i don't know if that's true or not but it was a good story it's a good story <laughs> Kind of disgusting, but good. It's really disgusting. Yeah. Wow. Oh, my God. <laughs> Thank you.